So Fratres and Sororas, welcome to this uh, special meeting. I want to thank Soror uh, Julie Scott, Grandmaster, for this invitation to be here with you today. Obvious, I can see only, as I say every time, I can see only a small light in front of me, and then I have to imagine you behind this light, hearing me, pay attention on my words, and it's important that you pay attention because, as you know, I don't speak a good English. So sometimes I say words that are not clear. Only something that happened when I read my message in, uh, in New York a few weeks ago. And some members in Italy, they tried to translate it using Google. Not, not the words, but the, the voice, my voice. And during in the text, I said that I hope that this meeting can strengthen the bonds among us and google translated that the meeting can strengthen the bones among us so it's um, probably the rosicrucian teachings can strengthen the bones also but <laughs> the meaning was completely different so uh, sometimes it can it can happen so today fratres and sororis i'm proposing a reflection to explore some dimensions of our beings uh, our reality and i call it this uh, this meeting the birth the life and the death because it's the cycle that characterizes our life and uh, uh, so it's only a way to conduct our thoughts so when we talk about birth it's important that we start from the beginning. And when we start from the beginning, we talk about Big Bang. No, the science describe the, the beginning of the universe, the birth of the universe with this theory. The Big Bang, it means a big explosion. But it's important that we understand that there were no uh, there was no no explosions. Explosion is a reaction, a chemical reaction that produces energy, matter that expands in a space that already exists, in a time, during a time that already exists. But with the Big Bang, time and space were born in that moment. So it's not a real explosion, but it tries to, to it, it helps us to visualize. Uh, and with the big, big Bang, I took some notes in order to, to help me to, to follow the, the, the line. So with the Big Bang, time and space uh, were born. The energy is what characterized the, the Big Bang and the, and the entire universe because the energy started to, to condensate and to produce matter. It's interesting because matter, the word, the word matter comes from Latin and it means mother. So matter is the mother of life, is, is the is our mother so we we call them the mother uh, our mother uh, earth uh, earth so mother is is something that is the base where life can manifestate itself and uh, this energy started to condensate and produce matter the first atoms hydrogen then helium and as the energy was very high it started to to react to each other and to produce the other atoms and then we produce the universe produces the planets the stars the the gas we can see now within the the, the, the telescopes we have in the space more or less four and a half billions of years ago our planet was born and the planet was not as we know it today uh, there were the, the it was spinning very fast in the in the space so the the day lasted less than 24 hours uh, the life was impossible because the atmosphere was completely different uh, ultraviolet rays from the sun was arriving in the planet and it is uh, uh, dangerous for life but something special happened because in the in this planet uh, these atoms probably through this energy arriving on the planet these atoms started to react with other atoms and started to produce molecules many molecules but some molecules were very special molecules because they are the base of life we are talking about amino acids and proteins and then in fact we don't know exactly science doesn't know exactly how it happened uh, because 
we can produce many amino acids, many proteins, but only some of them are useful for life. This process continued, and then we had the look, we are making an incredible jump because from these first molecules, we could see the first cell appearing in this planet. And cell is something completely different. Cell is something that feeds itself. Cell is something that is, can reproduce copies of itself. You have a cell and the cell can divide itself and produce other, other cells. And cell can react uh, if the temperature is too high, if the temperature is too low, if it, there is enough water or not. Cells react to the environment. So imagine that we are talking about matter that started to produce molecules, that these molecules structured itself in a way that produced the first cell, the first alive structure in this planet. Then cells met other cells and started to produce, to develop more complex structures. All beings, all alive structures we have has something in common is the molecule, a special molecule called DNA, DNA. And you, you heard about it, you know it. Our life has this special molecule. Now, we are talking about birth. And then in this process from the matter through the different reactions, the first cell, the, the structure, the evolution, the modification, and can you imagine billions and billions of uh, uh, reactions impossible to imagine? We arrive in this planet. We are the result of all this process. We arrive in this, in this uh, planet. And then if we re reflect, we can say that we are a structure, we are a group of atoms. And it's true. Imagine this is absolutely true because we are uh, uh, we are made by cells, the skin, the bones, the uh, the blood cells, but cells are made by molecules. Molecules are made by atoms, so we can say that we are a special structure of atoms, atoms that can study atoms, and it's interesting because, you know, we can say that. Human beings are atoms, and it's true. But there is a, a story, probably you know it. It's a story about a, a group of friends that they, they have never seen an elephant. And they knew that one day there was a, a circus in, in their city. So they decided to go during the night to, to see the elephant. How, it's, how is an elephant? And they went during the night, it, it was dark, and they tried to see where is the, the elephant, but it was not possible to see it. So they started to touch it. At the end, they met each other one day later, and then they started to discuss, oh, the elephant, yes, I can, I know how it is. It's like a column. And the other said, no, 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 it's not a column. It's like a, a pipe, it's a tube, a, a pipe, and it has two holes in the, no, no. And the other said, no, no, it's like, it's like a rope. It's like a rope. No, it's like a leaf. It's incredible leaf. So it's obvious that each person was saying, the, the, it was true what they were saying, but it was not the truth. Because no one could see the entire elephant. And this is what it, this is the, our condition in this universe. So when we describe the human beings as a, a structure, uh, uh, a group of atoms, it's true. We are a, a structure of a group, a, a structure made by atoms. But it's not the truth, because we are something more. For this uh, reflection, I, I want to read you some words of the uh, Hermann Joseph Miller, um, Nobel Prize for Medicine, I think in 1972, something like this. He says, to say that man is made of certain elements is a satisfactory description only for those who intend to use him as a fertilizer. 
it's obvious that we are not only atoms, but it's something marvelous. It's something incredible if we think that anyway we are atoms that can produce music, can dream, poetry. We can we can develop a moral sense, and we can study atoms. So we are atoms that are ready are able to study atoms and to study the entire story of the universe. It's as, as the universe decided to produce a, a structure to know itself. And it's something very interesting. So this is the birth, the birth of the universe, the birth of life and our own birth. And now we are here. You are here, I am here, and this is the life. So, from this energy, from this incredible energy, the infinite transformation of energy produced matter. So, in fact, we are atoms, but at the same time, we can say that we are energy transformed. So, as I said, we can say also that nature becomes self-consciousness through us, because we are part of the nature, the matter that constitute us is is comes from the nature the same atoms that constitute my body maybe in the past it was a tree or a dog or something uh, so we we come from the nature from the planet from the energy of the air the water the matter that comes and the energy that comes from the nature we are nature but through us the nature becomes self-conscious Uh, what is important is that we probably you heard about the intelligent design. I think this is the, the name intelligent design. What I want to say is that in, uh, intelligent design, it means that there was an intelligence incredible, that produced this process. We can interpret it also in a different way. We can interpret it as the process produces intelligence. The process builds a complexity and this complexity express more and more intelligence so it's a little bit different when we talk about an intelligence from the beginning that produced this structure this process or when we say that the process itself produce as a characteristic produce intelligence One important aspect is that life didn't become predominant on our earth through the fight, but creating relationship. This is fundamental. And we should keep in mind today, politicians, even uh, citizens in our relationship with others, the evolution, the entire evolution is based on relationship, not in fight. And this is very important. Now we are the spear points of this process. We are here and we are reflecting about it. So life, what characterizes us? Imagine you are in, the, in a party. One friend invited you for a party. You arrive and then you meet people that you don't know. Then you meet uh, you. Meet a person, and the person will ask you, who, who are you? And you, the first answer is your name. Who are you? I am Claudio. But imagine when you say your name, the person who asked, who are you, doesn't know anything about you. The name doesn't identify you. Yes, I know your name, but who you are, I don't know. Then if we start to ask, who are you? Who are you? We will discover that our identity is based on our choices, who we are. What define what we are, are the choices we have made in our life. Not the simple choice, for example, I don't know, maybe in the next holidays I go to the mountain or I go to the, to the beach. This is, these are very simple choices. But there are choices in our life that characterize us, show to others and to ourselves what and who we are. And these choices are the most important choices of our life because they show our identity. It's uh, when we observe the nature, 
one one thing that appeared clearly i don't know if you have a cat or a dog or parrots or birds if you have a a cat uh, and if you give it to the cat some seeds to feed it he will not eat seeds he will die but he will not see it, eat, eat seeds he want i don't know fish if you have a parrot or if you have birds and if you give a fish to them they will die because they want to eat seeds when we observe nature other forms of life what we see is that they they have no choices because the nature program they, they know exactly what they have to do they don't decide what to do recently in italy happened a, a very sad story a young a young man was running in the mountains and uh, suddenly he saw in front of him a, a bear bear is that a bear a bear and the bear probably i don't know nobody knows why but you can imagine suddenly you see it in front of you the bear attacked the, the this young man and killed him some politicians proposed to kill all the bears because they are dangerous yes but imagine the animals can't decide they know exactly what they have to do if they feel that they are in a dangerous situation they will attack not because they are thinking what is the moral sense of this or what is the best choice no they have no choice they will do what nature taught them to do but we are different since the first years of our life we understand that we have to choice we have the possibility to make choices and what will characterize us what will define the quality of our personality who we are are the important choice of our life and choices are important and sometimes are difficult why because you have many possibilities in front of you but when you decide something you know that all the other possibilities will disappear all the other life possible lives you could have will disappear so there are choices that are very difficult that can create those this special um, sensation that we call anguish you know you feel it's not easy you know you are uh, in front of a difficult choice but this choice will define who you are and this is very important to to know ourselves we talk about and know thyself yes but how yes observe your life observe the choice that you have done and through the choice people can understand or can know you better so life our life today now who we are to simplify the the the, the our our meeting our discussion our reflection we can say that uh, choice is something that characterizes us, the choice we have done in our life some days ago some days ago i was uh, traveling from italy to united states for these activities and i was in the train in london uh, i was in train changing uh, the the terminal in the airport you know i was going from the terminal a to the terminal c something like this and when i was in the train i read on the window hold on the train may stop without warning and i read this again hold on the train may stop without warning and i started to laugh because i said yes my life is a train i am in a train my life is a train and it can stop without warning and we know that it happens sometimes life tell us that our life is going to the end for example we lose hair in my case or you know your knees doesn't work so good like in the past or you don't remember things like in the past your memory start to to lose some information you don't remember the details or your eyes you don't see so so well like in the past so life gives us some signs that we are in this train and the train can stop sometimes without warning and i was laughing it was very funny because i connected this this phrase with the death 
people doesn't like to talk about that. This is uh, sometimes is understandable. I don't know in the United States, but in Italy or in Brazil, I live in Brazil. When you talk about death, people start to touch different materials. Sometimes they touch wood or metal. What I say is that it's important that you decide a very easy material, because if you decide to touch a difficult material to find, it, it becomes complicated. So they touch wood, they touch uh, no, as a, a gesture as, a, as, as if it could change the reality. We know that it doesn't, nothing changes if you touch wood when we talk about death. Death is the only thing we know for sure that will happen to everybody. Uh, once I was in a public lecture in Italy, and uh, I, I, like, I want to share with you this experience. I was in a public lecture in, in Italy. And then I said, look, I will, I'm not a prophet, but I will make a prophecy. In some years, everybody in this room who will be that because you will die not me i'm talking about you and then everybody started to laugh to laugh and all. at the end of the lecture during the questions a young a young girl she raised the hand and said so may i question uh, may may i make a question yes please uh, why you will not you will not die <laughs> so i said oh I was joking. It's obvious that I will die and probably I will die before you because you are very young. And so it's natural. Everybody will die. And as we know it, this is something very important, very important. We ignore. We ignore where we come from, what is the life worth living and what will happen with us when we say that we will die one day. We ignore the most important things about us. If we think, if we reflect, these are the fundamental questions and we have no answers, definite questions, definite answers for these questions. What we know, what we know, fratres and sorores, is that life, our life, expresses itself between two important very important moments and these important moments are are uh, how can i say it's um fixed by an important thing one is and the second is between this two conditions, these two breaths, the first breath and the last one, the story of our life is developed. This is what we know, certainly, we know it. We don't know how it will last, but we know that first breath and the last one, in the middle, we have the life. So the life is not the, the opposite of death, Life is the entire, the entire cycle. The opposite of death is birth. In the middle that connect both is life. But if we reflect death is what give a higher, a higher quality of our, to our life. Death is not something that arrives at the end. We think always that death is something that is at the end of our life but something that follow us during the entire life. It is the light that enlightens the path. And if we don't consider and meditate on it, we will walk in the darkness. We live in a society, we can say industrial countries, developed uh, on the, the industrial point of view, where we are taught that we will never die. We will be always young. And it is a, a very dangerous idea, very dangerous, because, because nature, nature has a specific period for, for human beings, kids, teenagers, adults, old people. In each period of our life, we have to express something 
But if we if we are convinced that we will be always young, we lose one of the most important aspects of our experience in this dimension. Sometimes we hear, oh, my father passed in transition. Oh, how old was he? 80. Oh, so young. No, 80, you are not young. <laughs> you are not young. You can die when you are 80, 90, or 70, or 60, or two years old. We die. It's natural. And we have to consider, we have to reflect about it. Why? If I know that my life will finish, I don't know when, but I know that it will finish, I understand immediately that the most important moment of my life was not in the past, is not in the future, but it's now. Because it's the only thing I have now in my hands is this moment. And now I am talking with you, Fratres and Sororis. I, can, I can't see you, but I know that you are here in me. So it's the only thing I have is this moment. So this is one important lesson that we have to learn when we reflect about death. It's very strong. It's too strong in our um, in our minds that the idea that after our death everything will continue more or less in the same way we have been living on Earth. There is an expression we say we only change horse. Uh, what we can say, what we can say, we talk about that our body is the result of the matter, this different relationship of atoms and atoms come from energy so we can say that we are an expression of energy and we are a special expression because this energy this structure that we are has a memory we make many 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 experience in during our life and we produce memories of this experience knowledge and we know that in the universe, nothing is lost, not, nothing is waste. So we can suppose, we can imagine that these memories, these characteristics of ourselves that we call personality in Rosicrucian teachings, soul personality, this personality, what characterizes us, we remain. I don't know how, I don't know where, I have no, I have no answer for these questions. But what I, I think that is wonderful is that we have the possibility to share these ideas and to explore these dimensions together. Yes, I took some notes here. And what is important to say also is that many parts of us die every day. We, we have millions and millions of cells that die every day in our body. And the specialists teach us that after seven, eight years, all the cells has changed in our body because they die and the body substituted them. So the, the body is completely different from the past, but the memory and the idea of self remains. So we can imagine that this idea, this idea of self maybe can remain. But again, Fratres and Sororis, the only thing we have, the only thing we are sure is the present moment. And in the present moment is where I make the choices. I don't make the choices for the future. And in the past, it's impossible to change. I make the choices now. So I don't know the future, but I know that my cho choices can define the future. So imagine how important it is to be present. It's obvious that we have to think about the future also, to reflect where what we will do in the future. But we reflect based on this moment, what we have now, the reality we have around us now, and this is fundamental. And our, our teachings, Frater and Sororis, help us in this sense. You know that we are uh, invited to be a um, question mark because it's not so important to have a, a, an answer for everything, even because it's impossible. What is important is to, to have questions and changing questions. We give an answer, then after one year, we change. The question is, is not satisfying us anymore. So we have other questions. And this process is a vital process, is something that keeps us 
us alive and we are expressing the an important law of the universe because the conscious that flew flow through us needs this process this is what keeps the conscious alive to make questions so the order help us in this sense we are we understand that the eternity that we talk about the future the eternity the eternity is not in the future the eternity is now even because if the eternity is now it could not be an eternity <laughs> so eternity is not only in the future that eternity is now we can live this special moment as a mystical moment when it, we can perceive this unity and this is what we call a mystical experience so it's obvious if the eternity were not here and now it wouldn't be eternity fratres and sorores i developed this reflection with you uh I would be very happy to shake your hands, to see your eyes, to see if you are smiling or not, or if you are reflecting about that, or if you are touching different materials when we talk about it. But I think it's important that we we uh, have made this reflection. But what I really hope is to to have the possibility. I hope that my life, the time I have in my life, give me the possibility to meet you fratres and sorores, to shake your hands, to see your eyes, to talk, to stay together, because as we said, the entire evolution in this planet happened through relationship. And the other aspect is that we have the possibility to make choices, and the most important choices are the choices that give to others also the possibility to, to experience happiness. When I, I decided to do something, and my choice produce happiness in others, this is the best thing we can we can do in our life and if we we could behave in this way imagine the planet imagine you know, the, the famous music imagine how this plan could be and i think this is our responsibility as rosicrucians to behave in order to produce happiness in others this is what i feel that is a real fraternity Frater and sorrows i will propose now a, a very short meditation i will read a text this is a text that touched me when i was very young in brazil and when i started to to walk in this in spiritual path when i started to to read and to hear the first first ideas about spirituality this text touched me a lot and then it follows me in my life so i suggest that you sit comfortable you find a, a place to, to, to feel comfortable, be seated, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Dear Frater, dear Soror, you were born in the abode you needed. You clothed the physical body you deserved. You live where God best proportioned you in accordance with your advancement. You have the financial resources consistent with your needs, no more and no less, but just enough for your earthly struggles. Your work environment is the one you have spontaneously chosen for your realization. Your relatives and friends are the souls you have attracted with your own affinity. Therefore, your destiny is constantly under your control. You choose, you collect, you elect, you attract, you seek, you change everything that revolves around you 
and your existence, your thoughts and will are the key to your deeds and attitudes. They are the attractions and the repulsions of your day. Don't complain or play victim. First, analyze and observe. The change is in your hands. Reprogram your goals. Seek the good and you will live better while no one can go back and write a new beginning anyone can start writing a new ending now fratres and sorores Take another deep breath and open your eyes. Fratres and sororas, I think that now we have time for uh, for questions. Yeah, we have. So if you want to make questions, I hope not so difficult questions, but uh, it will be a pleasure for me if I will be able to, to answer. So I think you can write on the chat. Do you, do you believe we choose our parents and any difficult circumstances? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that we we can choose exactly our parents. What I would say is that there are affinities and then we are attracted to specific circumstances. Even in our life, everyday life, there are things that happen and we don't understand exactly. If we would able to analyze, to see our life from, a, I don't know, from the top of a mountain, to observe what happened, Maybe we could see that something, the, the things that happen doesn't happen because it comes from the sky, but it, it are circumstances that we, we have created. And, we, and, and what we live, the experience we live are the result of these circumstances that we have created. So it's, as, as we, we have to experience some uh, lessons and then we create these conditions. So I wouldn't say that we, can choose exactly my father, exactly my mother, but my mother, but we are attracted to specific conditions and or specific circumstances, and then we we connect to each other. It's what I feel, uh, fratres and sorores. But again, it's important that you you take my answers and you reflect about it. It's not again, I am touching one part of the elephant, and even if what I say can sound true is not the truth eh? this is important we are touching the elephant in the darkness <laughs> so this is fundamental let me read another question um could you explain a bit more about the present moment yes uh, no i can't explain <laughs> because the present moment doesn't exist it's true it's obvious when we talk about present moment we are not Talking about one point, we are talking about a, a period of time. The period, the, the present moment is now. The present moment is what I will say now, is what I decide to do now. But you know, between the moment that I start to think and then I act, the, pa the time passes. So even the concept of present is something that is like sand in our hands. You know, it, it, you, you try to keep it in your hand, but it flows, you know? But it's important. Why? Because we we live uh, uh, our life as we were in the highway. You uh, probably you had the experience. You are driving a highway. You are driving in a I don't know the speed limit in the United States, but uh, you are driving and you see only the cars in front of you. You don't see nothing, 
Uh, you see the car in front of you, you pay attention, the car close to you, but in, you look in front of you all the time. And you can travel, I don't know, 500 miles. And at the end, the only image you have is the highway in front of you, the white lines in front of you. But you can go also by a bicycle or, uh, or I don't know, by, with your car in a small uh, streets inside uh, the cities. And then you drive slower. You can see the streets, you can see people walking, you can see the monuments, you can see the city, something that you can't see when you drive fast, faster in a highway. So when we talk about present moment, it means that it's a way for our mind to, uh, to reduce the speed. Our brain works too fast and then we don't are... We don't have consciousness about what is happening in our life because our mind is always in the future. What I will do tomorrow, what I will do in one hour and in the, after tomorrow and when I will be in another country and when I will travel. And the time I am living here now, it passes and I'm not conscious. Like in the highway, I drive many kilometers, but I don't see anything. So the present moment means to try to, to, to mm, reduce this speed, mental speed, and to be uh, uh, to pay attention on what happened around us, what happened in us. When we are talking with other people, the emotion that flows or appears inside us, the emotions are something very important to know ourselves. What happened? When? Why? When that person is talking, I feel this. I'm disturbed. I feel uh, not comfortable. Why? Why, when that person talks, I feel very happy. I say, oh, so to be conscient of these emotions that happen in us, we can do it, it only if the mental speed is uh, below the limits, <laughs> below the limits. Yeah. Might you discuss the Rosicrucian duty to the planet and our fellow creatures as part of the ending we write? Beautiful, this idea of ending, we write, because we are writing the ending, Fratres and Sororis. Each time of our life, we are, we are writing the ending. So when we can keep this idea in our mind, imagine how our life can change. Sometimes members ask me, but do you think that we should make a manifestation? We should do something very visible in order to, to help the planet. I uh, to be honest, I don't think we should do it. Uh, even if I, uh, I really appreciate this idea, I, I think it's beautiful that we think that we have to do something great to, to, to help the planet to change. But I think that was is, it's very active is that in our teachings, what we learn is also, it's also a sort of ethics. We understand how to, to create this relationship with the environment, with the idea of God I have, with myself, with the people around me. So when I start to develop these characters inside me through the teachings, my life changes. The relationship I have with everything changes. And when it changes, I am one point in this complexity that can change the other points around me. So sometimes we don't, we don't appreciate, we don't see how the influence, how the one person can do incredible things with the small things. We always think that we have to make a revolution and we don't consider that small things. I, I mean, when you say the right word in the right moment, you are in a meeting in your job and you feel the tension is growing. People start to be aggressive and you say the right word because you are inspired. You feel that you will say something and then the tension disappear. Okay, you have done an incredible job. Incredible job. So if each Rosicrucian, if each member understands that one consequence of our studies is to develop a different ethic, ethics, we will change the relationship we have with the world, with ourselves, with God. And these changes will affect the world. So I think this is the most important aspect. Uh, this is an idea, obviously. This is an idea. 
uh, and if we were all together talking, probably we could we could develop uh, different ideas. It's important that we consider one aspect for a transitional. I know something that you don't know, but you don't know you know things that I don't know. So if we have the possibility to share these ideas at the end, we will have much more knowledge inside ourselves. So it's important that we share ideas. This is the, the reason why we invite you to be a member of the affiliated bodies, because it's the place where we can meet each other and develop these ideas. What is the Rosicrucian view of suicide? I had this, uh, some members asked me also in other, in other occasions. Brothers and sororities, I think that suicide is something that requires uh, silence. Uh, we must have a, a very high respect. A person that uh, uh, commits suicide, can you imagine the, the pain inside one person? Well, probably we can't. Probably we can't. But what I think is necessary is to have respect. I don't accept the idea that who commits suicide will suffer in the next life or will... No, no, no. I think that there is a limit for, for us. As human beings, there is some weight that we can uh, keep in our shoulders, but sometimes it's too much. It's too much. Uh, we know, for example, that today, one of the, uh, the most common um, diseases we can find everywhere in the world is depression. And the pharmaceutical industries is a, a gold for them because they sell a lot of but depression has different levels there are conditions where you feel sad it's not a depression you are sad you wake up in the morning and you don't feel good you go to your job but you are you don't feel the energy flowing through you you, you don't feel it you look around you you don't see it's a sort of depression but depression is a strong word and you are not sick what your body is telling you is that is the environment around you probably is sick. And the body is telling you that is not for you. This place is not for you. This people is not for you. So the environment touch your body and your body is telling you that the environment is sick, not you. Uh, but maybe you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you some pills to, to help you to adapt to a sick environment, a toxic environment. And so but as I said, the depression have dif has different levels, and some levels are very serious, and uh, is uh, as it, it's uh, it needs the support of the doc medical uh, assistance and things like that. So, if a person commits suicide, we can't say anything. I think the the only thing we can do is the silence and respect for the probably for the pain that that person was 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 facing I think uh, thank you for today uh, okay I am wondering if you can speak about the significance of the summer solstice for Rosicrucians in the past and now in the present oh very well frater or sorry I don't know but uh, yes today is uh, 21st of June today is the solstice of uh, uh, the summer yes in in some aspect it is important because if like in the past it connects us with the nature it connects us with the universe we are not used anymore to observe the cycles of the universe we, we, we live in big cities and so we don't see the how the the, the vegetable grows or animals leaves we are not used no we go uh, we 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 created um, how do you call it, zoos when you put animals zoo uh, to to go with kids because they don't see animals anymore so uh, we 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 have broken the, the the links between us and the nature so the for us it's important to to recall this connection every time we can for this reason we have different celebrations during the year we have the festival of light we have the this uh, meditation for peace and because it's important that we maintain these bones with the nature alive 
inside us. This is fundamental. It was in the past. Uh, uh, we had this. Uh, th this is the the reason why it was born because humans being human beings they started to observe the cycles and they connected these these changes of the nature with themselves and then they created these celebrations these rituals to celebrate these changes in the nature and uh, and we do the same thing what we say what we do is to recall the bonds we have with the nature Can you expound a little bit, um, a little more on the importance of relationship during this cycle? I wouldn't, I, I, I prefer not to talk about, about cycle. I would prefer to talk about uh, the base of life. The base of life. Since the first cell in this planet, through all the evolution, all the story of the life in this planet up to now, all this complexity is based on relationship. So relationship is fundamental. And it's in our level, in the human level, it's based on sharing two aspects, very important aspects, knowledge and affection. These are aspects that if we don't share, we lose it. Knowledge means uh, that, as I said, I, I, in my experience, in my life, I, I have learned some aspects and you have learned different aspects. And then it is important that we share this knowledge because it's fundamental, it's life. And another aspect is that we do it with affection. We understand that through us, this, uh, the universal soul flows. And then we are completely connected, even if our we are not uh, conscious, we don't see these connections, but we are completely connected because life and the universal soul through, uh, flows through us. So affection, uh, emotion is something fundamental that we have to share, not only in this cycle, but always, always. Since our energy remains, do we meet our loved ones again? Uh, let me see how let me see how we can we can talk about it we we can we can talk we can talk about what happens when we uh, when we die uh, we can talk about reincarnation we can talk about karma but there is the theory and uh, the theory can sound Okay, it can explain many aspects of our life or can't, or then we change the theory or we modify the theory. But there is something that is the experience. For this reason, our teachings are full of experience. We are invited to, to, make, to, to make experience. So in, in some moments of our life, it, it's like if, if a veil that cover our eyes is lift and then we see a different reality in front of us. I I think, as I said, that nothing is uh, wasted in the universe. Uh, we don't lose uh, the memories. Uh, in the, today we could call about cloud. No, the, everything is on the cloud. Uh, even if uh, in the cloud for us is on the earth, is not in a dim different dimension. But anyway. I think that in some aspect, this relationship we create here among us remain, remain, because life is something that is expanded. Life is a characteristic of the universe. If you are walking with a, a, a carrying with you some beans, and one bean goes to the to to the floor, it will create a plant. It will grow. Life is everywhere. Everywhere you look, you see that the universe is one property of the universe is life. Life is one property. It's uh, um, so. I would say that this characteristic is not is not limited on the material aspect. And then I, it's my personal idea that this relationship we create, this these bonds we create among us will remain and so we can say that we will meet our our parents or 
our loved ones again. We can use this expression. But again, this expression is something that uh, help us to think in this dimension. When we uh, don't are lim when we are not limited by the material dimension, then these words represent nothing. Their reality is completely different. It's something that the words can't express. But at this level, I think it's something that we can share. Probably, and I hope we will meet our loved ones. What role? Do spiritual entities, for example, an angels and demons, play in our cycle of reincarnate or reincarnation? To be honest, fratres and sororities, I have never thought about it. Um, I am really. Uh, mm, what matters for me is uh, is the person I have around me. What touches me deeply and changes my the way I think, the way I feel life, is the relationship I create with with people around me. So to, I want to be honest, and I, I never uh, thought about demons or angels. It's something that, uh, for me, are, uh, I yes, I read about it. It's it's true, but it's a concept that mm, doesn't touch me. I I hope you are not. Um, how can I say? Mm, uh, yes, I, you were waiting for a, an explanation or an idea, but I have a few things to say about angels and demons. Again, uh, sometimes you hear a word or an idea from a person that is close to you and it can change your life. For me, I think we have to be ready. We are here for, an, uh, for a meeting in this life. We are here to meet uh, circumstances to meet somebody to meet uh, different conditions and we have to be prepared for this meeting otherwise the condition the situation appears in front of us and we don't see it like in highway oh considering lavoisier could you make an analogy that as matter the soul also lives continuously through reincarnations Lavoisier, we want to apply the Lavoisier principles on the spiritual life. Is possible? Why not? Uh, I think it's interesting. The idea is that what we know perfectly is that in the universe nothing is waste. So I think it's a law in the in the material level, and it's probably it's a law on the sp spiritual level also. So I think Lavoisier will be happy to know that we are considering his laws also for the spiritual levels. Uh, Grandmaster is making a sign. Yes, we have to stop. So, fratres and sorores, it's, uh, our meeting is finished. I want to thank you again uh, because your presence here for me was uh, it's been very important. I'm very happy with this possibility. I thank again Soror Julie Scott for this invitation. We have other activities these days. Maybe you will be here with us. I hope. I hope so. But anyway, I hope to see you soon in other meetings or personally. Thank you so much, Fratres and Sororis, for your gentleness and your presence. Peace profound.